So we always talk about there's money in the money. And one of the biggest things that we come across is people becoming money wise, understanding the language, the terms, the phrases that you come across when you're talking about lending and money. It's, it's like me going to a mechanic and they start talking about things I have no clue about, really trying to figure out if they're telling me the truth or they're just selling me something else. So that's what we really want to go through is making you money wise. We want you to understand the phrases, the terms, anything that you come across when you're working with money and the leverage. If you're a real estate investor, leverage is what you need. It's what makes real estate investing, but it's like a foreign language. It's like Portuguese, Cantonese, what is an escrow? What is a personal guarantee? What's the difference between a loan and a mortgage and a deed of trust? That's what we want to go over because we get thousands, tens of thousands of calls every year. And it's amazing how many people are still trying to figure it out. So we want to make sure you become money wise. So expect a series today about fundamentals. Then we're going to go over what do the lenders look like and what is all the talk between scope of work and proof of funds, all these different things. We want to make sure you understand how an escrow works and really what it even means. What is a title report? What does it mean? That way, when you're talking to the lenders, you understand if they're really talking straight to you or just really blowing smoke up your dress. So we're going to start with terms and phrases. We're going to start the fundamentals of a deal. What does a deal look like even before you go to a, you know, a lender? or even if you have a lender and you've established them, what is the fundamentals you need to actually bring to them? And where are the phrases, everything that they're gonna look for? We're gonna start with seven phrases in this initial transaction. And number one, we're gonna look, what is the strategy? They're gonna ask you, are you gonna do a flip? Is this a rental or do you not know yet? Because one way or the other, as we go through everything else, what we're going to go through and find out is, is this a good deal? Are you going to make money? Is it going to cash flow? That's what the lenders want and that's what you should want too. You should want to make sure this is a good deal for you and that's what all of this is going to do. So you're going to have to know if it's a good flip, is the money there? Is it a good rental? Are you going to make that monthly cash flow? As a lender, as an investor, you're going to have to start with your cost. So we're going to start with purchase price or contract. They may even say as is value. So we are looking at where do we start? What is our starting number? We need to know what our purchase price is or what's the number that is on the contract. The contract purchase price, that does not mean what the value is. It just means what you're paying for it. What are the terms that you've agreed to that you're going to buy the property for. Next, we're gonna go over scope of work. And this is one that probably confuses people because they think it's the same as the budget. But scope of work is really, what are you going to do to that property? Are you gonna add a bedroom? Are you gonna add a bathroom? Are you gonna redo the garage and convert maybe a shed or the porch into more square footage? Are you adding that egress window to the basement so now that that bedroom down there becomes conforming. What are you going to do to the property as far as moving walls, expanding the kitchen? This will give the lender and even you a picture of what that property is going to look like and what it's going to compare to when it's all said and done. What will this property look like when it's done has nothing really to do with the numbers, how much it costs. We'll go over that next in the budget. So we talked about scope of work, but the next thing that comes through that you're looking for is your budget. This is where you do go into, and at least at this level, when you're first looking at a property, it's probably kind of a higher look at a budget. You're not gonna get into the details, anything else like that. You're probably gonna look at a kitchen it's gonna cost me $10,000 to fix it, replace anything that's in their appliances, maybe windows, siding, painting, you just lump everything together. Because all we're coming and trying to do is get to a number that we could figure out between the purchase price and the budget, what it's gonna cost us to get into this property. And we're looking at the cost. So we have the purchase price and we know that equals some dollar amount. And we also know the scope of work, what you're doing to the property, what it's gonna look like when it's all done, walls being moved, beds, baths. But we're also looking at adding in the budget. 
what does that look like to get us to a number of our all in on the property? Because as a lender, even you, you wanna make sure that this deal is profitable, that you're gonna make money, and we need these two numbers. We need what you're buying it for, what you're gonna put into it, and then we're gonna need a third number after that. So what this is gonna get us is our estimated profit if we're doing a flip, or it's gonna get the equity. The equity is the difference between the amount you owe and what the property is worth. So that's the equity you have in the property if you're looking at the rental over the flip. So estimated profit, what are you going to make on the transaction? Because as a lender and even an investor, the only reason you're in this is to make money, to create wealth. So these numbers need to actually create profit or equity to make sure this is a deal that a lender wants to do. As I was saying, you know, we have the purchase price, we have the budget. As the lender, as the investor, the biggest thing is profit. Because as a lender, we wanna make sure you're making money on this transaction. Because if you're not making money, why do it? You'll probably end up walking away from the property. So as a lender, this is important that we understand your profit. Anytime you go through a deal, you need to understand you know, what is your profit? If you're doing a rental, what is the equity you're creating in this transaction? So to find out if this is a profitable deal, you're going to need to understand the ARV or as lenders will ask for your comps, your comparables. What are they talking about when they're talking about comps or the ARV? Well, the ARV is the after repair value. So what will this property actually appraise for market sell for in this current market once everything is done, once all the scope of work is completed. What will that look like? What will that sell for? And this is estimated by looking at what things are selling for now that are very like properties. That's what comps come in because we want comparables that are like comparables. That means if you have a 950 square foot house, you're comparing that to 900 to 1,000 square foot homes, not 2,000 square foot homes. If you have something that's a two bedroom, one bath, you're comparing that to like properties, which is another two bedroom, one bath house. It's not a four bedroom, two bath house. You wanna be realistic on these numbers because that is where the money is, is what the market tells you it's worth. So you need to go out and look at these comparables, some call it sometimes called comps, just to figure out your after repair value. But that also comes back to what we said before, your scope of work, your budget. If all you're going to do is paint and carpet something that needed more work, you're not gonna get top of the market. So you have to compare that to like properties that were maybe not fixed up. On the other end, if you are going to do a full remodel, you want your comparables to compare against properties that have been completely remodeled and in the same area, in the same size. You just have to look at it as like, if I was a buyer, what would I pay for this property compared to another property? And that'll get you a good idea. There is really no exact number. You just come within a margin of error when you're looking for comps and ARV, but you need this to figure out your profit because we know our purchase price. We know what it's gonna cost us. Now we need to know what we could sell it for. Those numbers, will help us figure out if this is a profitable deal, if we're gonna create equity. Here's another term you're gonna hear from you know, the lenders, even bankers or whatever, it's exit strategy. What does that mean? What are they looking for? When a lender is talking about exit strategy, all they wanna know is how are you gonna move on from their loan onto paying them off? So if that's a flip, all it is is I'm selling the property and once it's sold, I will pay you off if it's a rental is that you're going to refinance in that into a long-term loan and that will pay off in this case if we're talking about hard money the people who purchased it when they're talking about exit strategy they just want to know do you understand how you're going to pay them off so the fundamentals of a deal the reason we do this why lenders need it why you need it is because you need to understand if there's money in this deal is there a profit is there a cash flow so when you're talking to the lenders, even when you're doing this yourself, you need to understand, you know, what are you doing with the property? Is it a flip? Is it a rental? And then you need to know your numbers. What is the contract price? 
meaning purchase price, meaning what are you paying for it. And the difference between the budget is the money you're putting into it and the scope of work, the work that you're actually doing to the property. When you're talking to your lender, you need to know what is the way I'm gonna pay you off? What is my exit strategy? And here's the profit I'm going to make on this because I did check comps. I do, do know my ARV. I know all the terminology so we could talk and you can understand me, I could understand you. This is all to make sure you have a safe deal, that you have a safe transaction with your lender, that you know your lender is in your, you're working in your best interest. That's what all this terminology is about. So you not only understand the terms, but what they're looking for, what it means. We wanna make sure you have safe deals, profitable deals, and that's why we're going through all these terminologies and phrases. You know, we talk to tens of thousands of people every year, and what we find out is they're still trying to understand the terminology, this language of money. Stick with us, we're gonna go through everything from A to Z in the loan, from the application to the closing, to what happens after the closing, even when you pay it off what that looks like. If you have any other questions, we have a weekly call in where you could call in and ask us any questions. You could go over deal, anything like that. We'll have a link below. We've been in business over 23 years. We've seen tens of thousands of transactions, deals. We know what's a good deal, what's not a good deal in money. So if you have any questions or you want to talk to us about looking at a deal, coaching you through something, you know, check out the link below. We'd be glad to help you because we wanna make sure you're profitable, you're making money, and you understand what you're getting into.